Very good morning to one and all. I'd like to start my presentation with a quote from Mr. Warren Buffett. He said, in a business scenario, everything is clear in the rear view mirror, but not in the windshield. Today, I, Ajay Tawani, the portfolio manager of Team Counterfeiters, will present you the rear view image of our fund performance during SMIC course. We started with the investment objective to generate capital growth from diversified equity portfolio consisting of large medium cap companies from CNX 500. We set our benchmark as CNX Nifty. The reason for setting the benchmark as CNX Nifty was it, in the last three months, it gave 3% returns. When we compared the returns with CNX 500, it was giving 3.46% returns. The, uh, the reason why we came up with CNX Nifty was we didn't want to overpromise and underdeliver. So we chose CNX Nifty. And the most important question is, how did we generate this investment objective? It was based upon the risk profile and risk profiling of the team. We use the tool from the, uh, we use the tool, ICICI Bank Prudential, and the, uh, we did individual risk profiling of the team members. Then uh, at the overall level, we aggregated the risk profiles of the individual to the team level, and the team risk profile was moderately aggressive. Next, we said, we went on with the initial plan. The initial plan was to go with the core satellite approach. Now, what does this core satellite approach mean? We'll divide the entire pool into two different funds. One is core fund and the other is the satellite fund. Now core fund will uh, mimic one of the portfolio, one of the mutual funds and the satellite will be an active fund which will try to outperform, outperform the benchmark. But we had a stage one presentation with our faculty members. After this, we, we, analyze, we came to know that with this limited amount and the limited time, the core fund activity will be difficult and we dropped the plan. And we came up with the final plan, which was an active fund consisting of equity of 90% and cash 10%. We wanted this buffer of cash to time the market and get into the right securities at the right time. Now the most important thing, discipline is the key to success and risk management helps you be disciplined. So we set the overall portfolio risk level to be at 10% at all time. By this, what we mean is if, our in, if suppose on any day we have an investment of 1,25,000, and the portfolio value goes down to 1,12,500 and below, we'll exit from our stocks and re revisit our strategy and come up with the new, new strategy. We set the individual stop loss for the securities to be maximum at 15% level. This 15% is the reason because if, if, if any news comes in the market and good stocks comes down to a greater level, we didn't want to lose on to that because of just one particular event. And the next was, Whenever we, get the, whenever, whenever we achieve the target of 10%, we'll book the profits. That these were the rules. Now, after setting all the ground rules, the only rule which we followed is never break the rules. We've now coming down to a stock selection methodology. We didn't do any sector analysis or anything. We followed a bottom-up bottom approach based on the quantitative techniques. Now, first, we selected a uh, large cap stocks which were, whose market capitalization was above 50,000 crores and the mid-cap stocks from the CNX mid-cap index. We calculated the information ratio for each of the stocks in the pool and then sorted them based on the IR ranking. After that, we selected top 20 stocks from this IR ranking. Did, uh, then we did, uh, checked on the Bloomberg terminal, their uh, con analyst consensus estimates, and then we looked at some of the fundamentals which helped us pick the four large cap stocks and two mid cap stocks. This was our first set of stocks which we, uh, which we filtered down using the quantitative technique. And the last thing, the weights, weights were allocated using the black Litterman model. Why we use black Litterman model is here, this model helps us to give the analyst opinion, consider our opinion in the calculation of the weights. This is the reason why we selected black Litterman model. And why information ratio? Now information ratio is one thing which will which tells you that which security has outperformed the benchmark in the past. And now within the two months period of time, we wanted to go with the stocks which has already outperformed and bet on those stocks that they will continue to perform in the upcoming days. Now this, this is our investment pool, investment pool. These are the list of stocks which we have entered at different point of time during our SMEC course. And the top two performing stocks are Access Bank and HCL Technologies, which gave us 12.18% and 10.37%. And the bottom performing stocks are Cesar Sterilite and Aurobindo Pharma. The, these gave us the loss of 14.5% and 14.88%. Now, we'll, uh, the 
three basic fundamentals which we looked at uh, of the different stocks were sales figures, their profit margins, and the net income. Now, when we look at the sales figures, the most of the company's sales have increased in the three three year duration. If we look at ONGC, it has consistently increased. And if we look at the sales of Cessa Satellite, in the last year it has dramatically increased. Whereas Arvind and Kansai Neurolac are moving stable. But based on the Bloomberg Terminal Analyst consensus, we picked up these stocks. Now, if we look at the we, if we look at these three things in tandem and look at the share prices, the share prices of these stocks have shot up dramatically because of the improvement in their sales, net, ma net income, and the profit margins. The basic three fundamentals, nothing more than that. Now, going on to the weekly performance, how we moved week on week with our portfolio. The in the first week, these were our set of stocks and the weights were allocated at us. In the first week, the market gave the returns of 0.03%, whereas our portfolio, it was minus 1.79%. We didn't, we didn't change any stocks. We, went, we sticked on to the belief that these stocks will outperform in the future, and we didn't uh, buy or sell anything in the first week. In the next, in the next week, we, uh, we sticked on to the same stocks, but at the end of the week, we sold Kansai Neurolac and Cessa Sterilite. Kansai Neurolac, it has increased to 10%, and we, uh, we have sold, sold the stock because we set the rules before. And Cessa Sterilite, it has come down to 14.35%. Uh, the market gave the returns of 2.77%, whereas our portfolio gave the returns of 1.47%. In the week three, there was a lot of activity. We sold four of the stocks, Idea Cellular, ONGC, Sun Pharma, Tata Motors. The reason for selling Idea Cellular and ONGC was from past two weeks, the stocks were stagnant. They were not increasing, they were not giving any portfolio returns. And in the two months of time, we, we had to increase our return as well as uh, uh, choose the best stocks. So we said that if a, if, a stock, if a particular stock is moving sideways for two particular weeks, we'll sell off that stock and enter into the new stock based upon the buffer list which, which we had on the information ratio. The market performed 3.78% whereas our portfolio return gave 5.94%. Uh, this was the highest return which we got in any week. In the week four, we bought uh, LNT, Sun Pharma, Maruti Suzuki, and Arvind. These were based on the buffer, buffer stocks which we had in our list based on the information ratio. And we sold HCL Technologies and UPL Limited. The same reason for UPL Limited. It was moving stagnant. The week five and week six. In this, from here on, the budget budget news started coming in, and we didn't want to churn up uh, churn our portfolio too much. So we sticked on to the uh, best stocks which we have picked, and we sticked on it till the week seven. In the week seven, at the end, we started uh, selling off the stocks because the liquidate, liquidation date was also coming closer to us. So in the week seven, the uh, market returns were 0.32%, whereas the portfolio return was minus. 1.58%. Then the budget news started coming in, and Axis Bank has hit our target price. So we sold the Axis Bank, whereas Aurobindo Pharma, it went down for one particular day, and the next day it again shot up, So, but it had hit our uh, stop loss limit, so we had sold Aurobindo Pharma on uh, that day. And we also entered into LNT because at that time LNT, LNT was into the news, and uh, we got the right timing, and we had the cash in our hand, so we uh, bought six more stocks of LNT to average the price and get the higher return. In the week nine, we sold off LNT and uh, uh, we sold it at 18.25, and the market gave 1.05% returns, whereas our portfolio gave 4.22% returns. So the overall, overall weekly performance, if we look, we started at 1 lakh 25,000 and ended at 1 lakh 34,394. This doesn't include the bro uh, brokerage cost. After including the brokerage cost, our absolute return was 6.04%. So the, we outperformed uh, the CNX Nifty, our benchmark, when we didn't include the brokerage cost. And the information ratio which came out for our fund was 0 0.07, whereas uh, and the Jensen's, Jensen's Alpha, which is the excess return over the benchmark, is 0 0.06. This this is the fund performance overall. Thank you. We're open for any questions. So post the brokerage, what is the return that you got? Six point zero four percent. Post brokerage. Yes. Okay. 
So I have, uh, you know, two questions. One is, uh, you had a very short-term horizon available for uh, investment. Typically, you know, this is now not how equity investment uh, happens, but fair enough, there was a constraint. Uh, in such a constraint, you know, one of the things you said is, uh, you also went by the analyst uh, consensus. Yes. Now, if you if you typically have seen the way analysts would go recommending, uh, there is a lot of lag, uh, you know, before they will actually stick their neck out and say that yes, this stock is good, because no analyst uh, will immediately jump uh, and say that he believes that this is the best stock. Uh, plus, there is also you know some kind of I would not call it a herd mentality, but there is a comfort in numbers. So if you go by analyst uh, concerns for su such a you know, short-term investment, you probably missed most of the action in that stock when, when we talk of a two-month period. Why did you uh, then uh, you know, go by this? Sir, uh, the first level of the filter was IR ratio. So this gave us the stocks which, were, which have outperformed. Now we, we wanted to reconfirm our belief in the IR ratio that the companies have actually performed. So we looked at the un, uh, analyst consensus also, what is the outlook in the future, as well as we looked at the fundamentals, and we uh, then selected the stock that, yes, this stock is good, and it will outperform. So it was based, first, the quantitative technique of use, and to reassure our belief in the quantitative technique, we used the analyst consensus. Okay, my second question is, uh, uh, you know, in terms of your stock selection, uh, you showed a bottoms-up approach, where there is no uh, philosophy or theory about, uh, you know, first the industry or, you know, some kind of a funnel. Why did you use this particular approach? Uh, because we felt that uh, for a time duration of two months, uh, if you go for a sectoral approach or if you go to top to bottom approach, it would take time to realize the profits. Uh, there are two reasons behind it. First was the time duration and the second was the invest, the corpus was too small. So we thought that uh, in a month duration or a two months duration to get returns, uh, we should follow a quant approach and we we're uh, going for IR ratio and tools like this because we were picking up those stocks which have already been market in the past. So some other the way we were uh, selecting those stocks which uh, would give you assured returns and we were reassuring it by using uh, analyst opinion using Bloomberg terminal. So, so if you had the full year to you, what would your approach be? Uh, probably then we would have used uh, top to bottom uh, approach and then uh, we are not say, uh, saying that we would strike away the quant approach and all but then probably yeah we would have started with a fundamental based approach or sectoral based approach and then we would have gone ahead with it. How is your risk profile risk reflected in your stock selection here? Uh, you said your risk profile is mod bit on the aggressive side right moderately aggressive. Yes. How do you how is it reflected in your stock selection here? Sir, when we set our stop losses, uh, it was set to maximum level of 15%. So as per our team consensus, it was a bit aggressive towards the uh, stop loss side, whereas okay. our price targets were set at 10%. So okay, because as I said, you know, if you're calling it your slightly on the aggressive side, question is why so much diversification in the first place? When I look at your beta, it's 1.06. It doesn't look, you know, on the aggressive side. It looks, you know, pretty much close to the moderate side. So that's why I'm trying to understand, you know, how, why so much diversification if you are on the aggressive side? Sir, uh, to answer that, we selected the stocks from the pool of large cap and the mid cap. And the mid cap stocks are a bit aggressive when compared to large cap stocks, whereas large cap stocks, they are morally stable. So that is how we f uh, got in the mid cap stocks to set our risk profile. Now, as far as your investment rationale goes, your primary uh, starting point was the IR ratio as you mentioned. Yeah. So how did that the second layer come into picture in terms of the sales numbers and the EBITDA numbers that you were just showing? I mean guess, can you try to marry both of the approaches to lay out what exactly was the approach? So first initially we took the pool from the CNX and uh, uh, mid cap index then we applied the IR ratio and when we got the initial pool then we took the analyst opinion and the upside potential from Bloomberg. It takes care of the uh, analyst if it gives a positive recommendation. It means it takes care of both the EBITDA and sales. Not talking about the analyst, the, the sales growth and the EBITDA growth that one of the graph showed, how does that piece of information marry with the IR rankings that you have to come to the portfolio selection? 
Sir, the fundamentals which we looked at were the basic fundamentals. If a company is growing its profit margin, that the com that means that the company is performing well. So we look if the com whether the company's uh, margins are increasing because of the organic growth that is the increase in the sales, or it's just because of any change in the policy. That's that's why we took the three measures: sales. But as per your slide, I did not see any margin slide. It was the EBITDA slide, right? Yes, sir. EBITDA increase may not necessarily be based on margin expansion. But it it shows that the uh, profitability of the business has increased, not just because of any policy deviation or any inorganic growth. And just for the sales growth of the last three years or something, on which, uh, which was uh, I think one of the criteria for you to zero on buying CSA Sterling. So did you take any consideration of any exceptional item which could have propped up the sales number? Because. Uh, CISA Sterlite sales growth could have come about because of the merger of CISA and Sterlite rather than just a pure sales growth. So was that any consideration or you were not uh, cognizant of that fact? Otherwise, you might not have bought CISA Sterlite in the first place. No, sir, we didn't look at that, uh, that measure. Uh, I think one interesting thing uh, which you highlighted in one of the questions that you didn't go for any top-down approach and you went for a stock by stock selection to build your portfolio. Connecting that with uh, the second point you mentioned, you mainly used a quant based approach. Yeah. But then you added some fundamentals to that. So maybe if you can take one company's example, maybe what uh, one of the panelists asked, whether CESA or one, any one stock and maybe spend 30 seconds to take us through how exactly you did that, maybe it will be very useful. Yes, sir. If if we look at the Aurobindo Pharma uh, <coughs> Aurobindo Pharma numbers, the numbers have slightly increased here. The in the increase in the uh, sales figures, EBITDA, and the net income that has uh, that is slightly improving. And when we looked at the con uh, analyst consensus reports in the Bloomberg, it was showing that in the near future, as the quarter results are also coming up, Aurobindo Pharma is expected to perform better. So that that was one of the factors which was considered in, and we entered into the stock. So and that was the quantitative factor or the fundamental factor? Fundamental factor. This was the fundamental factor, but the initial stock, Arabindo Pharma, came up using the quantitative, quantitative factor. Okay. Was this a equal weighted portfolio? No, sir. It was. So how was the weights ali aligned? It Is was there uh, any logic behind the weights? We used black litter mo black litter and model at the first stage when we when we were starting our investment we used black litter and model to allocate the weights and later on when we got the cash we were dividing that cash into the uh, respective stocks which we are getting into it because again re recalculating the portfolio weights will increase the churning cost of the portfolio that was the reason why we didn't cal uh, calculate it at every point of interval. How, how does black litter and help you devise I mean assign a weight to a stock in a portfolio? Sir, uh, Black Litterman model, it uh, takes into consideration the analyst opinion. So whichever stock which we are strongly believing in, it will factor in that model and it will give, it, give us the weight. Give us the weight accordingly. So whenever, if suppose I have a particular belief that HCL Technologies is going to be sure shot up. So I, I'll assign a weight according to my estimates in the Black Litterman model, and it will allocate the weights accordingly to the rest of the stocks, giving that importance to HTL technology. So I, I observe one thing in the sense that there were a lot of churning or, or a lot of sale in between uh, during the two months. You know, kind of when you say that you are a fundamental guy, fundamental is typically for a long term. So what was the compelling rationale for you guys? Uh, I understand that two months is a very short period. But still, I, uh, I thought it is uh, in my view. But what is your answer and compelling rationale for so much of sale and churn? Sir, if we look at uh, if we look at the rules which we have set up, we s we said that if a stock has hit the stop loss or pr uh, target price, we'll sell it off. So we were just sticking on to the rule which we have set off. So whenever the target price was hitting 10%, we were selling it off. And whenever it was hitting stop loss, we were. But see, this uh, these are large market caps, so there's a reduction of 10% could be event based. If the underlying company and potentials are very strong, then then. So ha had you imposed any um, qualitative factor on the stop loss, or only just mechanical stop loss? No, uh, sir. It was based on the consensus of the team. We said. No, no, why applying? No, the question that he is asking is, 
was there a qualitative uh, layer on the, the the quantitative number or it was just a number based stop loss? Dus percent ho gaya to you will sell or dus percent ho gaya. So is there a subjective element as to why it has happened and whether you should be re looking at it or something? Uh, actually, it was not all quantitative, it was qualitative. For example, Axis Bank at one point it did hit our target of 10%, uh -huh. but we had strong belief within the team that it would hit higher, so we didn't sell it off, we waited it out. No, no, I'm talking about downside, you are talking about upside. Uh, so I was more specific on downside. No, no. Yeah. Even with the downside, we had a problem with Orbindo Pharma, it hit the stop loss, and we actually had a belief that it will hit, but uh, it will go higher. But the problem was the date of liquidation was coming closer. So suppose we had a longer period, we definitely wouldn't have sold Orbindo. But because of the deadline, we sold it off. So that you did not sell because of stop loss. That you sold because of the liquidity. deadline is coming up. No, no, it had hit stop loss. It hit stop okay. loss. And it was like of seven to eight days prior to uh, the date of liquidation. So we, could, we did not have the, we, we did not wait any further to check whether it would bounce back. Got it. In your whole investment portfolio, uh, there was no cognizance of the sectoral weights of the uh, benchmark that you are tracking. Uh, it was all bottoms up. You were totally <coughs> agnostic to uh, what is the sectoral composition and the benchmark, etc. No, so, so the tracking error was not at all a consideration in we your We didn't adopt approach. any sectoral approach. So why, why so? Sir, uh, tracking error is one thing when we, when we are trying to mimic any fund any fund or an index when that is the point when we look at tracking error so we were managing it actively using the quantitative technique that was but the reason the benchmark was defined as cnx nifty as per your own submission yes, the benchmark was set to outperform it no, not so to when you it. so when that becomes objective then you need to be mindful of the composition of that index as well right sorry sir when there is a benchmark set which you have to outperform then you also need to be mindful of the composition in terms of sector or stock, whatever the case may be. Mm. And your portfolio needs to have active weight over and above or under and above the, the sectoral composition. So you were totally agnostic to the composition of your benchmark. Yes, sir. We, we didn't take into consideration. This is after considering the brokerage cost, right? No, sir. No, no, no. Give me the total value. What is left to the investor? 1,32,555. And how much brokerage was paid? 2,000. 2,000. So 7,000 rupees you made for the investor. 7,